pi 1 is equal to 2 times root pi over 2, which of course means that i1 is equal to root pi. Now let's just recall what was i1. i1 was the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to negative x squared dx. This is equal to root pi. There we go. Of course, I was an ordinary person who studied hard. There's no miracle, people. It just happens they got interested in this thing and they learned all this stuff. They're just people. Yes, that did just happen. Feynman's technique is the undisputed champion of integration techniques, and we'll be proving that by solving the Fresnel integrals via Feynman's technique. So the, th the first thing <coughs> I want to get us to do is to consider Euler's formula. Now Euler's formula states that e to the i of x is equal to cosine of x plus i sine of x. Now that x is just a placeholder, we can put whatever number, whatever variable we want into there. And so we're going to consider e to the i x squared. Now this is equal to cosine of x squared plus i sine of x squared. Uh, now for the purposes of today, we're also going to consider um, negative x squared. So e to the negative i x squared, which is going to be equal to cosine of negative x squared plus i sine of negative x squared, which when you simplify, we get that e to the negative i x squared is equal to cosine of x squared minus i sine of x squared, like so. So now, if we were to consider the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative i x squared dx, we would be considering the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine of x squared minus i times the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x squared. There are our integrals. There they are. So we just need to solve this integral <clears throat> right here. Now, uh, we also need to um, assign a variable to our integral. We're going to call it i. <clears throat> We're going to say that i is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative i x squared. So from this, we can see and we can note that the real part of i is the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine of x squared dx. Sorry, I've not been putting my dx's down. There we go. And we should also note that the imaginary part of i is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x squared dx, or rather the negative imaginary part of i, like so. OK. So now we are clear to implement Feynman's technique. Now, in good old Feynman's technique fashion, we are going to define a new integral function, if you will, i of t, and we're going to introduce a new parameter. Now, we're considering the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative i x squared dx. Now, where are we going to introduce that new parameter? Well, for reasons that will become clear shortly, we're actually going to introduce the parameter in the bounds of the integral. So we've now got the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative i x squared dx. And again, for reasons that will become clear, we're, we're going to square this integral. And so we've got i of t is equal to the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative i x squared dx, all squared. OK, so there are two things that I want us to note. I want us to note that i of 0, so when t is 0, is going to equal to 0. It's going to be the integral from 0 to 0 uh, of, of something, which of course is always just going to be 0. And that i of infinity, so when t approaches infinity, I, I, when t is infinity, we're going to get the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative i x squared dx squared. And this is going to be equal to i squared. 
Okay, so now we are going to take the derivative of i of t. So here we go. So i dash of t, so aka taking the derivative, we're going to be using the chain rule here. So we've got a power of 2, so we're going to bring that down. So we've got 2. Now we need to times by the derivative of, of whatever we see inside of the bracket, so that's this. So that's going to be the derivative with respect to t of the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative ix squared dx, and then we times by the original function, so 0 to t e to the negative ix squared dx, like so. We are now going to use the fact that this derivative directly uh, turns into e to the negative i t squared, and so what we are left with is i dash of t is equal to 2 times e to the power of negative i times t squared times the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative i x squared d x. Okay, now in the x world, e to the negative i t squared is just a constant, so we can bring that in to the integral. So i dash of t is going to equal 2 times the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative i x squared times e to the negative i t squared with respect to x. And we can join those two together, so adding the powers, we get i dash of t is equal to two lots of the integral from 0 to t of e to the negative i times x squared plus t squared dx. And then we are going to bring that 2 into the integral as well. Okay, so now we have got this integral to deal with right here, and we're going to perform a substitution. We're going to let u equal x over t. Now that directly implies that x is equal to ut, and also that du is equal to 1 over t dx, which then also implies that dx is equal to t du. And then looking at the limits, when x is equal to <clears throat> uh, when x is equal to zero, we get that u is equal to zero, and when x is equal to t, we get that u is equal to one because it's going to be t over t. So we can rewrite this now as the so we've got i dash of t equals so we've now got the integral from zero to one of two e to the power of negative i times, well now what was x? x was ut squared plus t squared times by uh, t du. Now we have got a t squared to factor out here. Okay, now alarm bells should be ringing here because we should be able to see that this there's a 2t down here and there's a t squared up inside of that, that e there. Um, so if we were to differentiate this with respect to t, it's like we would almost be getting that 2t out of the front. Um, so this result that we've got inside of this integral is almost the derivative of this. So we could uh, we could think about what would what would we have to differentiate to get this as our answer. So what would we have to differentiate with respect to t? Well, we would have to differentiate i times by e to the negative i t squared u squared plus 1. However, if we were to differentiate with that u squared plus 1 over, here, uh, over there, that would come out the front. So if we also divide by u squared plus 1, that will cancel that. Um, so let's just go ahead and check this. So this becomes, uh, if we were to do this derivative, um, well, uh, so with respect to t, we're going to get i, um, which is just this one at the front, times by, and then we've got to bring all of these bits, which are just constants, out to the front. Um, so that's going to be negative i times u squared plus 1. Um, and then we've got to times by the 
derivative of the power with respect to t, which is just uh, going to be 2t, uh, and then times by the actual uh, exponential itself. So that's e to the power of negative i t squared, let me just zoom out a bit, u squared plus 1, like that. And of course, we've still got that u squared plus 1 on the bottom. <clears throat> so here we can see that the u squared plus 1, uh, they cancel out. And i times by negative i, well, i times i, i squared is negative 1, but we've got that negative sign there, so that's going to give us just 1. So that's fine, that basically cancels. And so, yeah, we see that the derivative of this is equal to 2t e to the power of negative i t squared u squared plus 1. Awesome, okay. So we can uh, we can write this, aka what we've got inside our integral, as this derivative now. So we're going to write i dash of t with respect to u, of course, still. Now we can bring the derivative out to the front, the u. Okay, we have got this to deal with now. Well, ideally, we want to get rid of this d dt, don't we? We want, to, we want to get rid of this derivative. Now, how do you get rid of de derivatives? What do you do? Well, you integrate, of course. So we're going to integrate both sides of this equation. So we're going to get i of t now, so sort of back to where we were, is equal to, um, well, the integral and the derivative essentially cancel each other out. And so we're going to get the integral from 0 to 1 of i e to the negative i t squared u squared plus 1 over u squared plus 1. But of course, it was an unbounded integral. And so we're going to get a big plus c on the end. You should never forget to add c when you do an unbounded integral. Um, OK, so we need to find what c is now. Now we're going to use those, um, those, those facts from earlier. We're going to use the fact that i of uh, 0 was equal to 0. OK, so i of 0 was equal to 0. So we can say that, so that's when t is 0. So i of 0, so this is when t is 0, is that's going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of now this substituted when t is 0, that's going to give us just i over u squared plus 1 du, and then of course that big plus c on the end. Now this is going to be equal to, now i of 0 we said was 0, so I can write 0 there. So 0 is equal to i times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over u squared plus 1 du. Now, 1 over u squared plus 1 is a known integration result, and that is <clears throat> arctan of arctan of u in this case. So we're going to be evaluating at arctan of 1. I haven't actually written the whole arctan there, have I? Arctan of 1 minus arctan of 0 plus c. So 0 is equal to i times by, well, arctan of 1, that is pi over 4. Arctan of 0, that is 0, so plus c. So we get that 0 is equal to i pi over 4 plus c. So that implies that c is equal to negative i pi over 4. OK, so we found what c is. So we can rewrite our integral, our i of t, as the integral from 0 to 1 of i e to the negative i t squared u squared plus 1 over u squared plus 1 du. But instead of that plus c now, we've got minus i pi over 4, or minus i times pi over 4. Cool. We are now going to use the next fact that i, when t is infinity, or as t approaches infinity, is, well, that's going to be equal to i squared. That's what we said earlier. So that's equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of i e to negative i infinity squared u squared plus 1, u squared plus 1. I know it's not proper to actually input infinity here. Um, however, all we're doing is we're talking about what happens to this integral as t approaches infinity. Well, as t approaches infinity, t approaches infinity, 
this integral approaches zero. Again, have a think about why that is the case. <clears throat> okay, um, so we can say that now, uh, so i infinity or i of infinity is equal to zero minus i pi over four. Now, what did we say i, um, I of infinity was? Well, from earlier, that was equal to i squared. So i squared is equal to negative i pi over 4. Now, what was i? i, if we scroll all the way back, was this integral right here. So from this, we get that i is equal to the square root of negative i pi over 4. And again, i was the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative i x squared dx. So we can say that's equal to the square root of negative i pi over 4. Now, I just used a calculator, but you can just go ahead and actually work uh, through it yourself. Um, it doesn't take very long uh, to prove, but you can show that this is equal to the square root of pi over 8 minus i times the square root of pi over 8. Okay, so we, we're now saying that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative i x squared dx is equal to root pi over 8 minus i times root pi over 8. And if we remember, the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine of x squared was the real part of our integral, so the real part of this. Now the real part of this is root pi of 8, because that doesn't have any imaginary numbers with it. So root pi over 8, and we said that the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x squared, again I should be writing these dx's, I'm so sorry, was the negative imaginary part of, um, of the integral i. Now the negative imaginary part, so we've got negative root pi of 8, but we're looking at the negative version of this, which is just root pi over 8. And so from this, we can conclude that the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x squared dx is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine of x squared dx, which are both equal to root pi over 8. There we go. That is our answer. So we have solved the Fresnel integrals using Feynman's technique. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Please consider subscribing.